So, in this lecture, we will uh, now see uh, new thing that instead of the three dimensional structure, uh, we will see planar transmission line. Actually, um, nowadays there is a need to have conformal structures, planar structures, so that the antenna or the transmission line, they are on the surface and they are also on a uh, suppose on a um, source and uh, load and power transmission circuit all are on a single plane, so that you can reduce the size of the object. So, that is why then there is a need for planar transmission line, we will see two very popular planar transmission lines. There are a number of planar transmission lines, but we will only see the two uh, which are easy to analyze and easy to visualize. The first one we will see is called a strip line. Now, strip line is the geometry shown here. You see that there is a ground plane on the top, there is a ground plane on the bottom and between the ground planes there is dielectrics, but there is another thing sandwiched in this inside this dielectric that is a metal. So, there is a uh, this metal which is infinite in the another transverse direction that means, if we call it y uh, sorry that is y. So, z direction in z direction this there is a strip of this of with drop loop metal. So, this metal is sandwiched or embedded inside this dielectric top is ground bottom is ground. So, this is the side view of the structure that you see th there is a metal, this is top is a metal, bottom is a metal, in between all are dielectric. So, what will happen generally you can uh, you see this ground plane is grounded. So, its potential is 0, this ground plane is grounded and this has got some potential. So, fill lines will start from here and will end up here. Similarly, fill lines will end up here. The whole thing is uh, this, this length is quite long, so that the this strip line, this, this central conductor that sees that throughout there are dielectrics. Now, the E field is like this. So, obviously, the H field will be something like this. Now, this is the structure of strip line. Um, it is a bit difficult to fabricate, because inside this you will have to plate this. So, generally it is that the half portion of this is fabricated and then on that another top portion is put. Uh, now, it is a planar transmission line obviously, you see that the whole structure is planar not like the 3 D th things like wave tide and quacks etcetera. By photolithographic fabrication it is made uh, as I already said that since it is planar and it is amenable to integrated circuit. So, microwave integrated circuit we use the strip lines as the transmission lines. Now, as I said this, so now if we look carefully uh, that sorry, if we look carefully this is a planar version of quacks I can say, because quacks is also like this there is a central conductor and covering that 
circularly throughout coaxial is the outer conductor. Here instead of that coaxial thing, it is a rectangular structure, but the central conductor is all the sides it is seeing the all the sides means at least in the top and bottom it is seeing the outer conductor. So, that is why you see the field lines starting from the central conductor are all going to the either up con, con ground plane or lower ground plane. So, it is something like that, but there is a difference that uh, in a coax uh, the field lines are all radial to the structure. Here it is a rectangular structure, but the field lines are not um, I will say they are not either in horizontal or vertical direction. It is a mixture. So, that is why the analysis of this strip line is not as straightforward as the uh, coaxial line. In coaxial line, because of the circular symmetry, the in cylindrical coordinate Laplace's equation take a nice form. Here also you can apply Laplace's equation to analyze that, but one thing is that since it is a uh, quite large distance here and theoretically a strip line is extending infinitely in the um, this uh, you can say z direction. So, and it has a finite thing here. So, uh, you will have to apply the Laplace's string here. Also, the uh, structure and the coordinate system they are not uh, properly conforming. So, that is why you need to have some special function to analyze that. So, Laplace's equation is used, but uh, special functions are needed to handle that. And also, um, so that is why people try that the, the another way of attack is uh, people try by having some conformal transformation. So, that you get a better conformal structure by transforming it in some another plane and they are uh, you can get a good thing. But one thing we will say that we need to um, as an engineer, we need to this transmission line means if we know the its uh, characteristic impedance, particularly these lines as the thing suggests that since we have a something like two a line. So, and here the whole um, the field lines are existing between the two conductors. So, T m wave is supported here. So, since T m wave is supported, so uh, the thing is we can have a characteristic impedance defined for this structure and that if we know basically engineers uh, engineering um, design requires that knowledge of the characteristic impedance of this transmission line in cases where T m things propagate. Now, that can be done. So, people have come out with some approximate method of analysis of strip line and uh, also uh, people have come out with some empirical formulas for these strip lines. So, that we will see one by one. One is two conductors and homogeneous dielectric. So, as I said T m wave should be there. Also like coax or parallel plate wave guide higher order modes T and T m also should be there. Now, higher order modes can be suppressed by shorting screws at the points where their maximum takes place. So, that people have done and were able to sub suppress the thing. Now, as I said that we can consider it as a planar version of flattened out coax both have center conductor completely enclosed by outer conductor uniformly filled by dielectric both, but as I said the reason that due to the non conformance non conformance between the 
structure of the transmission structure and the coordinate system uh, and the field things, we are uh, forced to do conformal mapping the standard procedure for solution of Laplace's equation in case of straight line. Now, in any T m mode we know the phase velocity is given by the velocity of light by epsilon r provided we are assuming and that is true for strip line that there is no magnetic material. So, mu naught a uh, mu we can always take to be mu naught. So, in that case V p will be simply c by epsilon r beta we know it is uh, same as k, but in case of dielectric it is root over epsilon r k and z naught if we take the L by C, L and C are the per unit length inductance and capacitance, then it is 1 by V p that means, phase velocity into C. Now, you see knowing the dielectric we can find the phase velocity. So, once we know the phase velocity, uh, it can be seen that to find impedance, I need to find the per unit length capacitance. So, both capacitance and inductance uh, determination is not necessary. So, the standard procedure for all these planar transmission lines including strip line is find out per unit length capacitance. Now, how per unit length capacitance can be found out? Now, capacitance we know that if we give some if we can calculate some uh, charge distribution or if we can find some charge distribution and find the total charge and if we can uh, find the potential function, then q is equal to c v is the root by which you, we can find the c. So, that is done for all the planar transmission lines. So, so you see that um, as I said that since it is a T m field, so it will obey Laplace's equation, but the problem is another strip line extends to plus minus alpha, that means infinity in both these directions x and this z direction. So, that is a problem that is all max uh, Laplace's equation uh, in a large um, domain if you want to apply uh, it uh, computationally creates problem. So, what people have done that uh, if you see the field lines obviously, far away from this uh, strip line the fields will die down, because the fields will gradually become fringing fields and after certain distance away almost there will not be any field, because of the uh, structure that the strip line is uh, existing only at the central portion of this whole structure. So, people have found that okay, for confining the field, we will say that at a distance plus a by 2 and minus a by 2, I have two more walls. Obviously, there are one ground plane here and another ground plane here, but I will put sorry two more two more ground planes or we call it electrical walls here the conducting walls. So, that the structure is now confined and by doing this when we are putting this thing since this is far away. So, obviously, I am putting a discontinuity here because from epsilon r I am putting a uh, metal, but then the reflection etcetera from that that will be died down here there is a discontinuity there will be higher even as and modes etcetera, but that will be a. So, here it would not change much this is the idea. So, now we can put Laplace's equation to our use that this is the Laplace's equation this is a potential function. So, within this region we have the Laplace's equation transverse Laplacian then put boundary condition again that at x is equal to plus minus a by 2 that means, at two sides there are electrical walls. So, the potential function will be 0 
and also top and bottom ground plane there the potential is 0. So, by this four boundary condition then put separation of variables again everything will be given in the notes, but the idea is this that central conductor will have a surface charge density because it has a potential non zero potential. So, there will be a discontinuity of the potential function uh, around that strip line central conductor and we know that if we have a potential if we take the gradient we get electric field negative gradient of the electric uh, of the potential function gives us electric field electric field multiplied by the uh, appropriate permittivity gives us the displacement vector. Now, displacement vector if I know then from Maxwell's equation uh, we can find out the magnetic field etcetera. So, field analysis becomes straightforward from there. Also here what we do once we know the displacement vector from that we relate it to the uh, Maxwell's the or Gauss's law that del dot d is equal to rho and from there we find out relate the rho and this potential function and ultimately manipulate it to find out that q is equal to c b. So, c we get from that because rho is the charge distribution rho gives me q and this potential function gives me uh, potential or potential difference and since they are related here. So, we can always find that thing. So, that is the approximate analysis people do. So, here now the it is true that since there is a discontinuity. So, that means two sides will have two different solutions. So, potential function sorry potential function. So, the idea is within this zone that means from 0 to uh, b by 2 there will be one function one type of potential distribution and then b by 2 plus to b there will be another potential function because of the discontinuity or the surface charge density on this. So, that is why it is broken into two and then first a n and b n the constants are determined then total charge can be written from the potential function knowledge as I said by applying Gauss's law. So, you have rho s. So, um, that rho s is related to that d by applying Gauss's law. So, that means once from the field you know this rho s then you integrate that along x direction and get the total charge and from potential function you get the voltage between conductor by since I know u i u i is known again from the gradient of the voltage a potential function. So, calculate V now you can find capacitance per length. So, by that method it comes like this that the capacitance depends on the width of the strip line then A is the place where you are how far away you are putting the electrical walls W is already there as I said the width of the thing and B, B is the strip line width that means the separation of the two ground planes the top and bottom their separation A already known. So, now once you have that then this C is known. So, you put it C this is a constant this is a uh, velocity of light and epsilon r is the known dielectric constant. So, you can find the characteristic impedance once characteristic impedance of the device is known all the engineering applications can be done like how much power it will take how to impedance match it etcetera all those things will come. So, now people have also come out with empirical formula for characteristic admittance, but there they need to have some effective width of the central conductor 
and that effective width is given by this formula. So, these are basically if you look at these formulas, uh, no one expects you to remember these formulas, but by referencing these you can find approximately up to accuracy of 1 percent these formulas are correct, uh, but this formula assumes the strip line the central conductor is thickness to be 0. There are other better formulas also people come out with that that for the thick uh, strip lines there are also some formulas. And one thing is to be noted that from this that if actually you see W e is related to W and so that means if the width increases strip line width its extent width in the x direction that increases then the characteristic impedance that decreases. So, that is one. So, now people uh, uh, if any design strip line is to be de designed then the job is actually to find the width from the given values because generally the characteristic impedance of any transmission line is specified. So, strip line what characteristic impedance is required that is specified and B is the separation of the two ground planes and epsilon r these will be given. So, from that by putting into those formula you will have to find out what is W. Now, either by computer programming trial and run you can find that or the same formula which you have shown before this formula people have inverted and this is the form that uh, if you are this epsilon r and z naught if they are less than this 120 you take this or if it is more than that you take this. So, based on that you can find out what is the value of w and uh, it this is the value given for its um, alpha d that is the attenuation constant due to dielectric loss and this is the attenuation constant due to uh, conductor loss complicated structure, but you see that we need to find out what is w and what is the thickness of the line that means, the uh, thickness of the strip line. If you know that people can find out from these formulas. Now, another popular thing as I said that in uh, strip line the problem is it is sandwiched between two uh, or sandwiched uh, or embedded inside a dielectric its fabrication is a bit difficult. So, people have thought that okay, there is a line of symmetry about the strip line. So, if you remove the top dielectric and the top ground plane then it becomes that you have a ground plane you have a dielectric on that there is a metal thing. So, you can always put that metal metallize some portion of the dielectric and that is very easy to fabricate. So, that is why that is called micro strip it is very popular as a transmission line is popular it also can radiate and behave as an antenna we will see here only the transmission line part. So, this micro strip it looks like this that means, it has a ground plane is the metal and then on the top there is a metallization not extending fully it is partly extended and between that it carries the power and between the two metals it is the dielectric that is taking power that is epsilon r is the dielectric constant of the dielectric d is the uh, you can say the uh, height or depth of the thing w is the width etcetera etcetera. Field lines if you see that definitely this is the um, just like micro uh, strip line fields from the central conductor which is at a you can think now this is the central conductor this is the outer conductor, but one thing is it is not a quacks or strip line that top uh, the central conductor is not central to the outer conductor here you can see this can be uh, somewhat like a two conductor 
but one conductor is uh, central another we are calling outer. So, field lines will come from here because this is at a these two are not at same potential generally this is grounded and this is at a potential. So, field lines will come here and this side is air. So, some field lines will also go to air, but uh, obviously due to dialectic constant uh, of di this dialectic by choosing it a bit higher most of the field lines can be confined inside this dielectric, but some will definitely go to air. Now, these are the E and H lines as you see. So, its fabrication is again photolithography easily integrable um, this I already said there is nothing new. Now, the point is there is a discontinuity unlike strip line you see we are creating a discontinuity in medium that we have a dielectric here we are making it air dielectric here. So, suppose uh, for argument sake let us assume that okay, there is T m wave propagation. So, a T m wave is propagating here and it is uh, inside this dielectric its velocity phase velocity is given by c it is a uh, this c means the uh, em waves uh, uh, velocity of light and that divided by square root of epsilon r but when it will go to air its vp will be simply c now these two at interface the two phase velocities cannot match. So, definitely since we have a discontinuity of medium here, we ca this structure cannot support a T m wave. Strip line was fully the whole thing was inside dielectric, the central conductor was fully inside dielectric that is why T m wave there was no problem. Both sides are seeing same, so phase velocity in both the sides could have matched but here T m not possible and obviously, due to this the field structure that will be a hybrid of T and T m modes, but definitely that analysis is not so simple. So, people have come out that okay, uh, if we make and practically the substrate is made very thin that means, if we make D is very very less than lambda people say that Okay, you have uh, since you have a very thin layer of uh, dielectric, though there is discontinuity here, ignore that. So, that is the field lines, it has been seen that the field lines also behave like you can see that more or less if you have very thin layer and quite good amount of dielectric here, then the strip line field lines and these field lines are almost same in this region not above a thing. So, that people say that okay, this also is a quasi T m field similar to T m. So, whatever we do for T m analysis we will do that that means, we will apply the Laplace equation. So, this I said something hybrid needed to support them. Now, quasi T m approximation for thin substrate and people find out an effective dielectric constant. Effective dialectic constant because uh, as we said that there is a discontinuity in the medium, but people say ok. The, so, the total field lines etcetera in an equivalent sense we assume that instead of two dielectrics here and that a there is an effective dielectric homogeneously distributed. Obviously, that effective uh, so that is attributed a effective dielectric constant it value will be something between 1 and epsilon r there are various formulas people have come out with so, with by based on certain empirical reasoning the values this epsilon uh, epsilon effective that can be found out 
then the entire structure becomes homogeneous, the field becomes similar to T m quasi T m and this epsilon effective is a function of d the separation or the um, uh, height of the micro strip from the ground plane and width of the micro strip. These are the for T m waves we can write beta will be something like this and B p is something like this well known. So, equivalent geometry of the quasi T m micro strip line you see here also after some distance we terminate these are two electrical walls this is our micro strip patch and this is um, the same. So, this is the equivalent thing that here we have a discontinuity here we say that throughout we have a new dielectric. So, there is no discontinuity between epsilon r and a. So, everything is inside this. So, this is something like a strip line sort of structure, but here there are no ground plane, but this structure that I have a whole thing surrounded. So, and that effective dielectric constant various formulas people have found and compared and like in some book I think it is Pojar's book in this equation they have given some effective dielectric constant value. So, if you compare that with the actual dielectric constant calculated by a CAD program you see that almost they are for all practical cases can be said to be same. So, those formulas are quite good empirical formulas. Now, approximate analysis follows like what we have done for uh, strip line you put Laplace's equation inside this confined zone. So, again there will be this boundary condition that in the side walls the potential function should go to 0 on the top and bottom potential function go to 0. So, again there is the, this this micro strip will have some charge distribution. So, there will be a charge discontinuity uh, also there will be a d discontinuity displacement uh, vector. So, from that you can find out by Gauss's law what is the surface charges from surface charges you go to the charge total charge and also from solution of this potential function by applying boundary condition you find out what is the potential function from that you find out what is the voltage between the central conductor and the ground and then you find out the capacitance then you find out the characteristic impedance. So, that uh, is shown here. So, finally, you get this is the value for capacitance uh, quite tough looking lot of expressions, but the idea that is why you try to understand that idea is simple I try to show it the values definitely no one expects you to remember this and now the empirical formulas that uh, epsilon effective should be put use you see that depends on obviously the dielectric constant of the micro strip, but also on this d by w ratio this d by w ratio is important or d by w or w by d. So, depending on whether it is less than 1 that means, w is less than d or w greater than d based on that the whole formulas they are given as these are empirical formulas that characteristic impedance will depend on this w by d and this. So, then to find out for design purposes when z naught is given and epsilon r is known you need to determine what is w or w by d then d is known. So, people will ultimately find w. So, people have inverted that and this is the inverse relation where these are again constant etcetera and uh, alpha d the attenuation constant due to dielectric loss is given by this and here this micro strip people they define a filling factor that means, how uh, the fields are partly in air and partly in dielectric that we have seen. So, how much they are filling the 
homogeneous thing that is given by this filling factor and the conduction part is rather more uh, simple to understand and to figure on that also and um, RS surface resistance no, not this surface resistance of conductor that is given by this. So, once you know the conductivity of the material, then you can find the thing. Um, so, losses etcetera micro strip that also uh, now people are paying attention and micro strip um, some common substrate material that is used for uh, micro strip is PTFE glass. So, you can see and tan delta it is important because you have seen that it directly affects the uh, dielectric loss. So, people try to go for um, better and better um, low dielectric loss things. So, RT derived is one such thing uh, 0 0.001 loss then these are things, but this also gives you epsilon r around 2, 3. So, that is also desirable. So, these are planar lines, uh, their analysis is almost quasi T m or T m type analysis and they are nowadays heavily used, but one thing is they cannot carry much power. So, these are for low power applications, but for high power applications you will have to still use the waveguide or metal things which can carry much power. 